today. Lord, we desire you. We desire your presence, Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. Let's sing it together. All my days on earth I will away. The moment that I see face to face cause nothing in this world will satisfy but Jesus you're the cup that won't
God, you are God alone. Everything you do is so good. You are God alone. You have the final word, final word, final word. Your word is yes, amen. Dependable God. You have the final word. I'm selling my life. Final word. Your word is day and day. Dependable God. Yes, Lord. Final word. Your word is day and day. Dependable God. You have the final word, final word. Your word is day and amen, dependable God. Father, you have the final word. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Owner of my life, captain of my salvation, beginning and the end. Father, you have the final word concerning our lives. When God speaks, every other voice is eternally silent. And God has been speaking. The proof that God has been speaking is that every contrary voice is finally silence over our lives. Every contrary voice is muted permanently by the Lord. Father, we give you thanks this afternoon. I want you to go ahead and give thanks to God if you are sure that God is the one that has been speaking. He is the one that has the final say. It is not the doctors. He is the one alone that has the final say. And whenever God speaks, Every other voice, especially voices that are contrary, are permanently muted. I want us to lift up our voice this special day and give thanks to God because he has been speaking over our lives. Mighty God, we thank you. You are the very God whose voice has remained loud in my life. You are the very God whose voice has remained very loud in the lives of my children you are the very God whose voice have remained loud in the life of my husband. You are the very God whose voice have become so loud. You are the very God that have rescued me, O oh God. You are the very God that have satisfied our longing soul. You are the very God that have fed me with the meal that you know will be satisfactory. You are the very God that I cried out to at the hour of need, and you responded immediately. You are the very God that have continued wiping tears off our faces. You are the very God that have assured us your presence. You are the very God that neither sleeps nor slumber. You are the very God that opened the gate of the month of April and gave us a triumphant entry. You are that very God. Lord, therefore, we give you thanks for opening the gate of this month for us. The very God that has been keen to hear when, whenever we cry out to him. You are the very God. You are that very God. We give you glory. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being on time. You are that very God that has been on time. You are that very God that has been walking behind the scene. You are that very God that have not denied me access to your voice. You are that very God that have been the covering over my life. You are that very God that have shielded us from every arrow. Thank you, great God. We give you all the glory and praise because you have the final say in our lives. Your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. Eternal rock of ages, we are grateful to you. You are that very God that has been right on time 
whenever we call out to you. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are in our lives. Thank you for answering your name in our lives in different aspects of life. We return praise to you, glory to you, and adoration to you. Thank you once again, O oh God, for this privilege to seek you in this midday prayer session. At this hour of prayer, Father, cause us to have a personal encounter with you. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. A very good afternoon to every one of you that is already tuned in for today's midday prayer. I'm so excited that you are part of today's midday prayer. You're highly welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. And just testimony, you're welcome, Sister Marcy, you're welcome. Uh, Mary Favor Chow, you're welcome. Uh, Faith Isha, oh, wow, wow, Mommy Faith, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Mommy Labi, you're welcome to today's midday prayer. Pastor Favor and Timothy, you're welcome to today's midday prayer in Jesus' precious name. And what a joy to know during my day, you're welcome in Jesus' name. It is our first midday prayer. Lovey, 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 you're welcome in Jesus' name. Precious Lord Jones, you're welcome. I have to welcome you very well because today is the first midday prayer in the second quarter of the year 2022. Tanya Enane, you're welcome in the name of Jesus. The last time I saw you on this platform was in the month of March. So I have to welcome you very well because God crossed you over to the month of April, which is the second quarter of the year 2022. And I believe God that have ushered you into this new season, into this new month. He will make every impossible thing possible for you in the name of Jesus Christ. With God on your side this month, every impossibility will become possible. God will level every limitation, every mountain that have stand before you in this month of April, which is the month that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just like that stone was rolled away, every limitation will be rolled away supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Every crooked path, God will make it straight for you. The month of April will be a month full of strange testimonies for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that represents a grave in your life, they will open up on their own accord in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like the grave could not keep him back, whatever is your own that has been tied in the grave, it is hereby released into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. This month shall be a month that you will shout the shout of joy. You will sing your song of hallelujah in the precious name of Jesus. Whatever you've been doing that looks as if it's in the hiding, God by his own self will bring it to the limelight. You will not run in the wrong direction. You will not walk in the wrong direction. Every day of your life, God will order your steps in the path of righteousness. He said he will not suffer his own to see corruption. Throughout this month, God will not allow your spirit man to be polluted. You will not lose your faith. You will not lose focus. You will run and you will finish the month well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. As our custom is, we don't joke when it comes to sharing this broadcast. I'm sure even heaven recognizes that we are these people that don't waste time to advertise the kingdom. So if you have not shared, what are you waiting for? Tap on the share button and go ahead and share the broadcast quickly so that we can now go ahead into the word session. Then thereafter, the prayer session. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly recap something that I said yesterday uh, during our service in the church. I said that uh, every new season will require one's setting up, will require you to set up your life. April is the first, is the second quarter of the year 2022. 
So it is a new season. Whenever a new season comes, one of the things it requires of us is one's setting up. When you buy a new phone, no matter how horrid you are that you like to use it, you want to insert your SIM card, it will not work for you until you set it up. It will be difficult for you to partake of the blessings of a new season if you are not keen, if you are not deliberate in setting up yourself. When a new season comes, the demand that a new season presents is that one must set himself up. So do whatever you can in your power to make sure you create time to set yourself up. Without a setting up, you cannot attract the blessings of this season. And a season comes and it passes. So if you're not deliberate about this setting up of oneself, this season will just slip out of one's hand and you're not able to lay hold of the blessings that it carries. But I pray that this will not be anyone's uh, uh, portion here in the name of Jesus Christ. So today we are quickly looking at the topic I captioned, the reward of soul winning. The reward of soul winning, which I believe will be the last topic to close the one began a week ago. Having re-evaluated our parameter for soul and also our burden for soul, we did that last week, Monday, that it is necessary for every believer to re-evaluate their soul, the burden for soul parameter, the capacity of their burden for souls. And thereafter on Wednesday, we look at why is it necessary for a believer to have burden for souls. So now we can look at the reward for soul winning. I would like us to begin by reading the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24. The Bible says, Faithful is he that calleth thee, who will also do it. The caller is the doer. Faithful is he that has called us. That is faithful is God, the one that called us into this ministry of reconciliation, the one that enlisted us into this ministry of reconciliation. Faithful is he that has called us. And because he has called us into this ministry of reconciliation, therefore he will do it for us. And among other things that the caller who is God will do for us, he will reward us. He cannot call you and entrust an assignment, entrust you with an assignment without being keen to reward everyone that have diligently carried out the assignment and trusted into their hands. Praise the Lord. So faithful is he that called us and he will also do it. I know God will do your own for you. As you get yourself set out on this uh, righteous cause, on this great mission, God will do your own for you. God will do my own for me. What man have not been able to do, God is ready to do it for us because he is too faithful to disappoint and he's too faithful to fail us. In Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 19, Isaiah 45 verse 19, he said, I have not said to the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. He said, no, I didn't say it. I didn't say to the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. It also means I didn't say to those that embark on soul winning to go out and do it in vain. Because winning souls is part of seeking God. Having burden for souls is part of seeking God. Because we discover that soul winning is the heartbeat of God. So you can't go on a mission touching the heart of God without a reward. He said, I have not asked the seed of Jacob. I have not said to the seed of Jacob. To seek me in vain. And lastly in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. The Bible says, he said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. That is God speaking, that I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. That I will reward every man according as his work shall be. So if God is coming quickly to reward every man that according as his work shall be, we cannot afford to drag our feet on this assignment. 
because the one that employed us or the one that deployed us will come at a certain time. He visits periodically. And when God visits periodically, he's coming with a reward. He's not coming at empty-handed. He's coming with a reward to reward every man according as his work shall be. I would like to read the message translation of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. Revelation 22 verse 12, I read the message translation. He said, yes, I'm on my way. I'll be there soon. I'm bringing my payroll with me. I'm bringing. He said, I'm on my way and I'm bringing my payroll with me. It is my prayer that your name and my name will not be missing on his payroll in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that have called us, the Bible says he is faithful. The one that have called us, the Bible says he has not said to the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. The one that called us and deployed us on this great mission said, I am on my way coming. He said, I will be there soon. Don't think I am, don't think I am, uh, don't think I'm absent. He said, I'm on my way coming and I'll be there soon. How is he coming? What is he coming along with? He said, I am bringing my payroll with me. I pray that the names of our children will not be missing on his payroll. And do you know what? His payroll is all inclusive. His payroll. He said, I am coming. I am bringing my payroll with me. I will pay all people in full for their life's work. Listen to me. God is coming and he says he's coming quickly and he's coming with his payroll with him and he will pay everyone in full. He will not keep back what belongs to you. Neither will he keep back what belongs to me. He's paying each and every one of us full according to how we have effectively worked, according to how we have efficiently ministered to souls, according to how much we have touched uh, 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 what is his heartbeat? May we not be missing. May our names not be missing on his payroll in the name of Jesus Christ. So quickly, let's begin looking at the kind of reward that God said is coming with quickly. Number one reward for soul winning is power. Number one reward for soul winning is power. Let me say this. Power is one quality that a believer cannot afford to lose. We examined that extensively in our service yesterday. Power is a quality, one of the qualities that a believer cannot afford to lose. If you lose power, you lose your identity. If you lose power, you lose your place of dominion. You lose your place of authority and you become a subject here on earth. So to keep basking, to keep experiencing the power of God, it will require you to keep winning souls. Why should one, as a child of God, be comfortable when you are gradually losing your identity? When you lose power, there's no two ways to it. You lose your identity. When you lose power, you lose your place of dominion. When you lose power, you lose your authority. Therefore, you will become a subject here on earth. Things that you were meant to rule will begin to rule you. So if you don't want to lose power, if you don't want to lose your identity, you don't want to lose your authority, you want to consistently be basking and experiencing the power of God, you have to constantly win souls. You have to daily win souls. You have to monthly win souls. When that is done, then he that called you to this great assignment will come with his reward. And one of the rewards he will bring to you is the reward of power. He will give you power. He will give us power. The Bible talking about the disciples of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. He said, and he called the 12 to himself. And when he called them, what did he give them? Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. The Bible says he gave them power. He called unto him his 12 disciples. And he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out. 
and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. This verse of scripture, <clears throat> excuse me, confirms to us that God gave power to his disciples. And the purpose for the power given was to touch lives. Because you look at it in verse 7. He said, and as you go, that is as you go, the purpose of the power that I've rewarded you with, as you go, preach, saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They were given power because they were on the mission to restore the lost sheep of Israel. So he gave them power. So power is one of the reward that our caller, God, comes with quickly, especially when we have effectively carried out our work, or rather, effectively done our assignment. Number two reward that he comes with quickly is supernatural supplies. That is before our need arises. When we talk about supernatural supplies, supernatural supplies, it means living a lifestyle that before any of your need arises, provision is rightly waiting for you. God did something to me before I came. And let me tell you, when we talk about this provision, sometimes we look at it that until it is a hundred thousand, until it is half a million, until it is a million, that is when we begin to testify. God can begin with you with a hundred shillings to see how faithful you are, to see how much you will celebrate him, to see how much you will return the glory to him. Praise the Lord. Before I came for this meeting, I needed to make payment for something. And uh, wherever I took that thing to, the lady had sent me their pay bill so that I can make transfer and make payment because it is something that needed to be repaired and they cannot repair it here. They will have to take it to Nairobi. And she told me that in our office, before we take any item to Nairobi, payment must be made. And here I was preparing for midday prayer. And immediately she called and gave me the message. She said, if you make payment today, it will be returned on Wednesday. But if you don't make payment today, just keep on counting. It is three days in between. And I know whatever it is needed to be used urgently. And when I look at my phone, I discovered that the impressor on my phone cannot make the payment, was not up to the amount that she needed to pay. I just turned and I was so relaxed because I told her, I am paying right away. I'm picking my phone. I assumed that my Mpesa had that sufficient amount, but it wasn't. To cut the long story short, as soon as I turned and I was walking away, so relaxed in my spirit, I had a, a, a text message. And as soon as I turned back, I saw an Mpesa that came into my phone without wasting any time. I picked my phone. The first thing I did was to pay time. And the second thing I did was to complete the amount and forward to, to the pay bill I was given. And I was bold to pick my phone and I called her. I said, please check your pay bill. I have made payment. So send it to Nairobi immediately so that it can be returned by Wednesday. Why am I sharing this testimony? God is still God of on time. Supernatural supply is that supply that comes to you. At the moment your need arises, that you won't need to run helter skelter, that within a twinkle of an eye, God will come through for you. That is one of the reward that God brings quickly to give those that are out on such mission. The Bible speaking in the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 35. Luke 22 and verse number 35. The Bible says, and he said unto them, When I send you without purse and script and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said to him, We lacked nothing. If they lacked, they would have said, Ah, master, there was a night we slept without food. There was a night we were cold. We didn't have anything to cover us. And for them to have confirmed that they lacked nothing, it means that God of on time came through for them. I pray that in this month of April, that God of on time will keep showing up in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. 
as we get ourselves busy on the mission, on the going for souls, God will be on the mission to see to it that our supplies are supernaturally made in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Your consignment is in your assignment. And one of our primary assignments here on earth is to make sure that hell is depopulated and the kingdom of God is populated. Your consignment is in your assignment. So if you're missing your consignment, it's an indication you have not been actively involved in your assignment. You can't be involved actively in this assignment of soul winning without your sender, without your caller running to you, coming to you quickly with his reward to see to it that all your needs are supernaturally made. He said, when I send you, did you lack anything? Let us be on the going on this mission and lack will be a past tense, I tell you the truth. It will be a past tense. It will no longer be a topic to be discussed in your life. It will no longer be a topic to be discussed in your family. Lack will be far away because God of on time will keep showing up when you right near him in the name of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 4 and verse 36. John chapter 4 and verse 36. Look at what he says. He says, And he that reaped receives wages. He that reaped receives wages. That means God places you and I on his payroll. When we are out for souls, your name comes automatic on his payroll. This implies, or rather, this explains why he said in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, just as we read in the message translation, he said, I'm coming, I'll soon be there, and I'm coming with my payroll with me. He said, and he that reaped receives wages, receives wages. The month has ended. Today is, uh, I think, 4th of, uh, of, of April. Organizations are making plans. Payrolls are being prepared. People start receiving a lot on their phones, on their emails, that they have been paid their salary because of the work done, because of what they did in the month of March. If we, men that are evil, knows how to pay, knows how to reward, knows how to come with our payroll and send it round and make sure the wages of our workers are paid. How much more of God, the faithful God that cannot lie, the faithful God that cannot deny his name. Listen to me, beloved. Your consignment is in your assignment. Let us go and be actively involved in this great commission, in this great assignment that God entrusted us with. And I tell you the truth. God is too faithful to lie. He will put your name. He will write your name. You will be included on his payroll. And he will come with his wages. He say, he that reapeth receive wages. And gathereth fruit unto life eternal. I pray for you and I that our lives will no longer be fruitless in the name of Jesus Christ. Our lives, the work of our hands, we will, not, we will no longer labor and there is no fruit to show. Fruitlessness will no longer be our portion in the precious name of Jesus Christ. When God includes your name in his payroll, like I say, it is an all-inclusive package. It is a payroll that comes. Your health is in it. Everything, <clears throat> excuse me, that pertains to life and godliness is in that payroll. So why should I in any way miss out on this payroll? Don't allow the devil to cause you to drag your feet, to cause you and I to be too busy that we, we, we miss out on this payroll. Praise the Lord. Number three reward for soul winning is his ever abiding presence. That is the ever abiding presence of God. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Anyone that misses the presence of God is doomed for life. In Mark 16, 20, he says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, and the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. And they went forth 
they didn't go backward they, they went forward this month you and i are going forward on this assignment of the this great commission we are going forward he said and they went forward every one of them they went forward and preached everywhere and the lord walking with them when others are begging god to be with them when others are begging looking out for the presence of god begging god to be with them the company of those that goes out on this great commission being busy engaging themselves making sure the heartbeat of god matters to them they don't struggle to carry his presence they don't beg for his presence he said he was walking with them he was right there with them he folded his lips not that walking he was walking so he became a team with them his presence was with them because they were on a mission that matters to them therefore he didn't deny them his presence the company of those that are on on mission that are out carrying out this great assignment diligently will never beg for the presence of god the presence of god becomes a 24 7 experience his ever abiding presence i wrote here when you go sorry when you go on God's behalf, God must go with you. When you go on God's behalf, God must go with you. If God isn't going with you, check how many places or how many times you've been going on his behalf. Going on his behalf means going out to touch lives. When you go on his behalf, God must go with you. He went with the disciples because the disciples went on his behalf. And when the presence of God is with you, there are other blessings that the presence of God comes along with. One of the blessings is that every mountain begins to skip. Every mountain. Mountain represents institutions. It represents barriers. When the presence of God is with you, mountain begin to skip like rams. You read that at your own time in Psalms 114. From one, from verse one to eight, he said, "What alien thee, o, o, o mountain, that you skip like rams? Why are the mountains keeping? Mountains were moving. Why were the mountains moving? The mountains were moving because of the presence of God. So when the presence of God is with you, anything that represents a mountain must be level. It doesn't matter the height of the mountain. The mountain must be level." But when will the presence of God be with you? When will it be with me 24-7? When we are out on this mission, deliberately out, intentionally out on this mission for soul winning. Number two blessing you enjoy when his presence is with you, joy and fulfillment. In Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, he said, in his presence is fullness of joy. He said, thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, not not a joy that is temporal, not an occasional joy, joy at all season in its full capacity that even when people see you, they know you are a joyful man, that you are a joyful woman. That is one of the convoys of his presence. And then number, number three, convoy of his presence, it terminates pressure in the same Psalms chapter 16 verse 11. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. He said, thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. It is the absence of pressure that brings pleasure. And it is the presence of pleasure that terminates pressure. And what brings pleasure? It is the presence of God. It is the absence of pressure that ushers in pleasure. And it is the presence of pleasure that terminates every pressure. Hallelujah. I desire the termination of pressure. I desire to experience the pleasures of God. Which is part of the convoy of his presence. Without prayer, without much effort, this becomes the experience of the company of those that are on the going mission for souls. And then last for today, let me just stop here. It guarantees answer prayers. This I have said repeatedly since we began this series. It guarantees answered prayer. 
say, you have not chosen me, John 15, 16, but I have chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit and the fruit that you have brought shall abide and whatsoever you will ask in my name, my father will give it to you. Whatsoever, including that ever, I tell you, that ever that has been of concern, that have been of great concern, that have taken sleepless night away from you. He said, whatsoever. It includes that your own ever. Whatsoever you shall ask. He said, it shall be done. It shall be given. Because you have taken upon you whatever was my heartbeat. You have made it your concern. Because you have been on the mission, on the going, making sure the assignment of the great commission is not interrupted. Making sure that there are no more irreversible losses being recorded by God as a result of a soul that perishes without Christ. Now, souls are birth on the altar of prayer. Souls are nurtured on the altar of prayer until they mature and eventually they get established. I remember somebody one time, we had a service that was start a service of fruitfulness. I've shared this testimony before. A matured elderly woman that have given birth with her grandchildren. And when God's servant was praying for fruitfulness, those that are believing God for supernatural conception, he said to them that God will have him to lay his hands on them. I saw that old elderly mama. She walked to the front and she was prayed for. Initially, I thought she was standing in either for her, someone in the family. But at the end of the service, I asked her, I said, Mama, it is done. Whom were you standing in for? She said, no, I wasn't standing in for anyone. I was standing in for myself. She said she discovered that she's barren, not barren with, without children. But she has no seed in the kingdom source that she has saved, that she can point to, and that she's getting old. Therefore, she would like God to make her fruitful, that from now she wants to bring souls, people that God have used her to save, and she would like to see them established in the kingdom. What a desire. What a prayer. Souls are birthed on the altar of prayer. You travail for souls. A time should come that you are waiting on the Lord, and you are not asking for what you want. You are asking the Lord. He said, ask me. Ask me of the hidden. And I will give them to you. Just like we ask for anointing. As ministers of God, we ask for utterance. We are going in for a service. We are asking the Lord, give me utterance. Give me utterance. As a music minister, you are praying, asking the Lord to anoint you. And indeed, he heard you. Because when you stood on that podium, the entire atmosphere was charged. You could move the people from the outer court to the inner court. So what makes you doubt that the same grace for intercession cannot be used to travel and bad souls? Ask me of the hidden and I will give them to you. If there is a man, if there is a woman traveling for souls, there is a God that will cause the souls you and I are traveling for to be birthed. And not only being birthed, he will cause them to be nurtured as we continue traveling. And at the same time, he will see to it that they are established in the kingdom. In closing, how many souls do you have that are vibrantly established in the kingdom? If there, is, if there isn't, it is not late. We can begin today. Let prayer for souls be included on your daily prayer list. The Lord, the week should not end. The month of April should not end without a soul being added to the kingdom through me. Hallelujah. So I'd like us to pray even before we end this broadcast that Father, I am ready to go on mission for souls. Help me. Father, I'm ready. I am here ready to go on mission for souls. Therefore, Lord, help me. Mighty God, I ask that you help me. 
David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from you. We have asked God when we are embarking on journey, that Lord, I am traveling. Be with me on this journey. Favor me on this journey. Clear the road for me on this journey. Time has come. We are embarking on this journey, going on mission for God to ask the Lord, that Lord, I am ready to go on mission for souls, oh God. This great commission, this great assignment that you have called me and entrusted me with, I am ready to be on mission for souls, oh God. I ask that you help me level every mountain, clear every the path for me. Lord, make the going great. Make the going great. I am ready, oh God, to go on mission for souls in this month of April. Therefore, Lord, I ask that you go with me. I ask that you go with me. The Bible says they went everywhere they were preaching. Now in this dispensation, whether you are in the lift, feel free to talk to someone about Christ. You never know. You are going to the third floor at the ground floor. In few minutes, it could be one minute, let someone hear God bless you from your mouth. Let someone hear that Jesus loves you. Let someone hear that do you know Jesus? Let someone hear that. Let me remind you that he's been knocking the door of your heart. Would you like to open up to him so that he can gain access to your life? Father, I am ready to go on this mission for souls, oh God. I ask that you go with me. Let the going be great. Let this mission not be interrupted. Father, let it not be interrupted by all forms of distraction. I am ready to go on this mission. Father, I ask that you shut down anything that will distract me, anything that will seal your mouth, anything that will make me feel unqualified, anything that will disqualify you when you have opportunity to minister salvation. Lord, I come against it. Go with me, just like you went with the disciples. Father, go with me. The Bible says you went with them and you were walking with them. Go with me and walk with me. On this mission, go with me and walk with me. I cannot do it alone. And because I'm ready, Lord, I ask that you go with me and walk with me. In the name of Jesus, manifest your power through me that will convince and convert souls. Father, manifest your power through me that even my immediate family, sometimes the hardest people to minister to are your immediate family. Very, very difficult because they know all your flaws. Before you say one, they have said 10. I want us to ask the Lord for power. Sometimes the most difficult people to minister to are your colleagues in the office. The, sometimes the most difficult people to minister to are those that knew your past. When Jesus was seen, you know what they asked? Is it not the son of the carpenter? They start analyzing you. They start describing you based on your past. But in the sight of God, the Bible says all things are passed away. We'll be saying, Lord, manifest your power through me. That will convince and convert a soul. You are not the one to convince a soul. Sometimes God helps you to convince a soul. And when you convince them, the conversion is carried out in the church. Some people will tell you, okay, I've heard, but I'm not ready. Don't get disappointed. At least you have convinced them. You have taught them. They know you have convic convinced them. Then the conversion happens sometimes in the church. The conversion happens sometimes to someone else that that maybe they come into contact with will be asking the Lord to manifest his power. Lord, manifest your power through me that will convince and convert souls beginning from my Jerusalem, my Judea, my Samaria, even to the uttermost part of the world. Father, I ask that you manifest your power. Manifest your power through me that will convince and convert souls. That will convince and convert souls in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Distance is not a barrier when it comes to the power of God convincing and converting souls. I share this testimony as I round up. We have one of our, our father's sister. That we've been believing God for her salvation. Not only her, the entire family. And one of my younger brother 
actually saw a seed standing in the gap, praying, believing God for the salvation of that auntie. To cut the long story short, precisely, I think the month of February, either towards the end of February, we got the news. She got saved. Not only did she got saved, she got baptized. It doesn't matter how long, don't give up. Distance is not a barrier. Where she was, was I don't know how many kilometers away from where my younger brother was. But because he had burden for her, we had burden that that family must be converted. God converted her. She was convinced. The power of God convinced her. The power of God converted her. She even changed her name. I return all the glory to God. Will, will there be people in your Jerusalem? Your Jerusalem talks about your immediate family. The Lord manifest your power. Sometimes you want to minister to them. They begin mocking you and they're calling you nicknames. Daughter of God, son of God, is that not who you are? Why are you getting offended? It is the power of God that will manifest through you. It is that power that will convince them. It is that power that will convert them. Lord, I ask for the manifestation of your power. The manifestation of your power. That as I come face to face with the unsaved, your power will be made manifest. Your power will convince them. Your power will convert them. And lastly, we'll be asking the Lord that Father... I am your threshing instrument. I am a threshing instrument in your hand. Father, sharpen every blunt edges and make me useful in this season of harvest. Sharpen every blunt edges. I am a sickle in your hand. I am a threshing instrument, oh God. I ask that you sharpen every blunt edges, every blunt edges and make me useful. Make me effective for harvest. Make me effective in this exercise. Sharpen every blunt edges. Maka idabo uhaya tigo sibaya. Leko subra adaliko baya. Blunt edges that makes you not to talk when you're supposed to talk. Blunt edges that will not allow you to minister salvation when you're supposed to minister salvation. Father, sharpen every blunt edges. I am an instrument, an instrument of harvest. You said the harvest is ripe. The fields are wide. Sharpen every blunt edges of my life and make me, oh God, a useful instrument that will bring in harvest in this season. That by the end of this month, oh God, to the glory of your name, I will be pointing to the souls that your power convinced and converted. That I'll be pointing to the soul that Lord was brought to the kingdom that I was privileged to bring into the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I will not shy away to share the gospel with others. I will not share away to invite people to church. I will not shy away. Sometimes it is your, 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 your invitation. You just share a, a, either a flyer or you welcome someone to church. And you didn't know what you are doing. You are preparing that person for salvation. A week should not pass by without you reaching out to someone to come to church. We must not go lukewarm in the church. We must not, we must not accept lukewarmness in the church. This fire of revival must be spread round. We must be out on this mission fervently making sure that irreversible losses are no longer recorded in the kingdom. Thank you, mighty God. This is the confidence that we have, that when we ask anything according to your will, Lord, you are right there to hear us. We have asked for your power to be made manifest. We have told you that we are ready, that you should go with us. We have asked that you should make the going great. And we, we have asked that anything that will distract our concentration in this great assignment, that Lord we pull it down. And we have asked, oh God, because we are a sickle, we are a threshing instrument, that you sharpen every blunt edges of our lives, that will be so effective in soul winning, that will bring in multitude of harvest into the kingdom, to the glory of your name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed, amen. When God looks down from his habitation, he will see you, he will see me, how fervently, how focused we are in making sure that hell is depopulated and the kingdom of God 
is populated. That when he comes with his payroll, your name and my own name will not be missing. You know how awkward and how terrible it can be when your name is missing on the payroll of the organization where you work for. That when he comes quickly, you will not miss out in his reward. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God increase you. God strengthen you in Jesus' name. In case you have been on this journey and you are not yet born again, or you got saved and along the line, you got deviated. I believe God wouldn't want to see your life perish. He wants you to come back to him. He wants you to come to him. He's been waiting. There's no man that will be comfortable to see anyone, his loved ones, perishing. To see someone that he loved dearly and is gone. And he's told that, by the way, this fellow left without knowing Christ. It doesn't bring joy in the heart of anyone. I want you to know, you that is listening to me, that is not yet born again, you are part of our beloved. You are part of my beloved. It won't please me. It won't gladden my heart if you perish without Christ. Therefore, I would like you to pray this prayer and say, Lord Jesus, with my heart I believe and with my mouth I make this confession that you are the son of the living God. I renounce the work of sin. I renounce the enticement of sin. If there be any covenant that I might have entered into, consciously or unconsciously, by this prayer I renounce all of them. I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are now born again. You are a child of God. If only you know Heaven is rejoicing for this simple confession that you have made today. Your name is now deleted from the book of death, from destruction. Your, not, your name is now written in the book of life. But do you know what? You need to recognize, you need to identify a Bible-believing church where you will be recognized, where you tell the pastor that you gave your life to Jesus so that you can be trained and equipped to be an army that will be right on the field, serving the Lord fervently. And in case you are in Mombasa, do not hesitate to look out for me Eat on this uh, contact. Call me and I will give you direction of where the church is. And you will be taught and you will grow and establish. You will be nurtured, you will mature and you will be established to serve God fervently. Hallelujah. The Lord bless each one of you that tune in for today's uh, midday prayer i highly appreciate you from the depth of my heart it is now time to give our offering the very first offering in the month of april here on this platform of the travel of hannah the very first offering in the second quarter of this year on this platform of the travel of hannah like i said because of the love seed that many of you keep giving we, have, we haven't gone offline. We have continued being offline, reaching many souls. Praise the Lord. Don't keep back your blessing. Don't keep back that seed. Sow it into the kingdom because God is in need of it for the propagation of the gospel. Eternal Rock of Ages, I come before you this hour to thank everyone that is partnering with you to give their offering. No one partners with you and goes bankrupt. Father, therefore receive our offering. The first offering, Lord, in the first midday prayer in the month of April. I ask, O oh God, as you receive this offering from our hands, let strange doors be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Strange doors that will lead to strange testimonies to your glory. Let strange doors of financial breakthroughs be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. That in this month of April, come the end of the month, we'll be lifting our voice to give glory to you by virtue of your visitation in the aspect of our finances. No one will lack in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how the prices of things are going up, oh God. The Bible says when men are saying there is a casting down, 
we shall be saying that there is a lifting up because we have a covenant with you that cannot be altered. You say your covenant you will not break. Neither will you alter the things that have gone out of your lips. For the time has come for this scripture to find practical expression in our lives. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Good. Good news oh, for those that are still online. By the grace of God, we'll be having God's servant, Mommy Labi, on Wednesday. If you miss Wednesday midday prayer, now you sabi, by all means, try and connect. It's going to be a great time in the presence of God. God has spoken through his servant and she can't keep silence. So she's coming on this platform on Wednesday to be a blessing to us. I want you to start inviting as soon as we shut down, be the mouthpiece that will start inviting people that by quarter or five minutes to noon on Wednesday, they should get their gadgets ready and get connected online. It promises to be a wonderful experience, wonderful encounter, an unforgettable encounter with God on this platform. Aren't you ex excited with this announcement? I don't know if you are, but if you're excited, put your hands together and celebrate in anticipation what God is set to do on this platform on Wednesday. We look forward to that day. Hallelujah. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Mommy Faith, thank you so much for tuning in. Mommy Labi and everyone that tuned in today. The Lord bless you. Let's go out and touch lives. Hashtag burden for soul. Burden for souls. I love you dearly and I wish you well. Amen.